welcome to episode 10 of the Strategic Momentum Podcast. I'm your host, Connie Steele. In every episode, we share tips, stories, and advice from progressive leaders and how they've been able to break through their business inertia and propel their business forward. Content is king in today's digital world. But to build compelling content, it's important to think about how it aligns to your company's brand and audience. But as your brand and audience evolves, your content needs to quickly pivot and evolve alongside them. Today's guest, Mark DeVito, is a three-time Emmy Award-winning creative director and brand strategist with over 20 years of experience leading creative campaigns and developing strategic content. Mark shares his perspective on what it takes to build content experiences that creates momentum for your business. Thanks for joining us today, Mark. Thank you. You've been in the business of creating content for much of your career. I know you've been involved in the development of all kinds of formats across a variety of industries, from television programming to music videos in your earlier days to now all forms of digital media. So it'd be great if you could tell our listeners a little bit more about yourself and how content strategy and development became a passion of yours. Absolutely. I think that, uh, you know, when, if you're, if you're a creative and, you know, in the early days before, you know, we had all the social channels and it was more about, you know, creating content that was, that was fun, that was powerful. Um, and to see your stuff on TV in the early days was, was, was exciting. So I think the, I think the passion was, you know, if you're a filmmaker, you just want to make stuff, you know, and you want to create a world of, of stories, um, and building stories and, um, seeking out, you know, new and interesting ways of telling stories. And so I think the the passion was more about like the creative alongside the, um, uh, the emotional, you know, connectivity to the things that you can build. So how did that lead you to where you are today? Because now you've got a very different role. Right. 20 some years ago, we, I don't think we, we thought of ourselves as content creators, as much as being, you know, producers and, you know, uh, um, directors and, in part of, you know, the visual process. And I don't think we thought about brand as much. And, you know, back in the days of television and television startups, I was in a, a situation where, you know, we had to create, um, very strategically branded programming for networks that were fledgling, that were, that were building and evolving. And, you know, unbeknownst to me in those days, you know, I was quickly becoming a brand strategist alongside being a creative content developer um, and producer. And that sort of swiftly led into, you know, where digital media just allows for a wider audience and, you know, a more targeted audience and the excitement of being able to create media for for a much larger, much larger global audience. Great. Now, in in light of that too, it'd be great for you to share a bit about, you know, what it is you do at Bates Creative as well. So I think this is the best of of all the worlds that I've I've experienced over the years. I think that, you know, if you've developed a career of opportunity, you start to find yourself in a position that develops the or utilizes the best of all the developed skills that that you have. I I partnered with a creative shop that really understood um, the strategy behind, you know, the branded work that they did. They understood the research. They understood, you know, the tactical approach to to what they needed to do. Now to bring that content experience, a studio experience to ongoing challenges for our clients, we're a, you know, creative-led, brand-driven content agency. Brand drives all of our decisions, but we're a content agency. We We develop content for for next gen, for um, the future of the brands that we're that we're trying to build, and try to you know find ways of building their audience in a very dynamic way through using some of the brand techniques that that we've learned over the years um, are sound. So, why do you feel it's such a challenge in today's world for companies to create the right content for their audience that creates the right connection? You need the right talent, right? You need the right people who understand how to produce the right content. You need the right content to be produced for the right audience, right? You need to understand enough about your audience and who you're um, producing that content very specifically for to know what it is that they're going to have the, the hunger for. It's definitely not a, you know, one size fits all environment that we're living in now, you know? 
as the tools have gotten accessible and easy and we're all carrying around, you know, the best video camera in the world in our pocket, there still needs to be that, um, that understanding about what content creation really is, how to either script something out or how to storyboard, how to actually create the experience that you want to create for your audience. Look at, you know, analyzing what's been done, you know, with, with similar types of things and then, and then trying to iterate on that. But I think, you know, good, good creativity kind of comes from within, right? So it's, I think it's, I think it's really paramount for people to not, you know, just play copycat with a lot of the things that are out there because then we're just contributing to the, you know, mass amount of unwanted content, unwanted data, and just the, the inundation that we all feel every day with a tidal wave of, of new things that get released. It's like, so you have to really look at your cohorts. You have to look at who you're who you're basing, you know, the work that you're, that you're generating for, and then try to, you know, try to, um, add something that's, that's, that's valuable, that's, that's relevant. Um, and that's, that's, that's on task. You know, when you've been in television production or you've just been in content production for, for so many years, especially when it was difficult, you know, before the digital tools made it easier to acquire and to edit and to develop crafted, you know, storylines. When it was difficult, you know, technologically to make those things happen, you had to be a both a, you know, in some ways, um, a scientist and uh, and a creative kind of at the same time. And since my career kind of started in developing long form and short form content um, in a very quick, fast paced. Um, environment that was video driven to me that just became the norm so you take that world and you apply that to what we're seeing now in this you know quote unquote content strategy now i think it's it's interesting because i think everybody now is a television producer but they're doing it for digital and they're excited about this new way to kind of look at the world i think it's exciting to think about each client's challenges um, to how they need to create the best content specifically for their audience. And it's really, a, a, you know, not something that we could have done in that um, larger scale broadcast environment in the past because it just too much, took too much time and money to produce a lot of that programming. Now you can do it cheaper and faster and you can keep adjusting and having fun with it. So let's talk a little further about developing the right core strategy. How right. would you advise customers on developing this overall content strategy? I mean, do you typically find that people are just executing because they feel like, well, I need content and so I got to put something up there without truly thinking about what's the the need and developing the appropriate plan around the need? That's exactly right. I think that there's, I think there's a couple ways of answering that. I think one, um, I'll put my brand strategy hat on and there's nothing... Uh, more important than the right strategy and the right research and the right analysis and the right insights to generate the right content for any audience. You know, so I think that, you know, things that are often produced without that, you know, that kind of back end. I mean, look, even, you know, even in the early days of television, I think unbeknownst to a lot of people, the, the amount of research, you know, that was done and the amount of data that drove, you know, decisions that were happening, even if you look at, you know, television in the 80s and 90s um, and going into the into the new millennium, you know, it was really, it was very research-based. And, you know, every PR, advertising agency, every campaign really requires strong data to, you know, to ensure that, you know, you're going to be on point. Now, there's something recently that, that I had heard and, and um, kind of processing it, which is, data driven or data influenced right so it's it's either from the beginning or you know is it coming from the end do you have to re- make all of your decisions based on the data and you can't do you know instinctually what you think is best how do you use the data in the right ways well that's another whole discussion you know because we can't be slaves to the data and we can't use that to make you know um, every decision in our minds and in our clients minds sound for everything that we do um, but at the same time, you know, there's something about, you know, utilizing relevant data that can that can really inform and generate, you know, good decisions and good perspectives, especially when you're even going into creative brainstorming. At the same time, let's look at brands. Let's look at the other part of it is the brand positioning. And I use the example for Marriott. You know, Marriott really knows, and a lot of a lot of hotel hospitality really know their market so well. They just really understand 
the tra- the business traveler versus the infrequent traveler versus the younger traveler versus the family traveler. They really understand those markets so well that they've built all their core brands around that. And then the content that's produced has such a adherence, you know, to that positioning that you you almost start to expect it. And I think we need to be thinking about creating, you know, creating content that can be potentially even versioned. You know, we used to call it back in the TV days, like a, a program versioning, because we knew that, you know, different markets would have a different approach, especially if you were doing global content. Today, there's no real versioning, you know, when we think about digital content. Well, what does that mean? Well, maybe there is an adjustment for specific content that's served in specific geographic areas to specific audiences that are there and that make it more relevant. The customization is so high that 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 they um that they that they want to engage even more. So so I think that that's the direction that we need to be going in. Mark and I talked about what it takes to develop a content strategy that's aligned around your customer needs. And that involves having relevant data to guide decisions. But he also indicated that in today's digital world, we have this ability to create content faster and cheaper than ever before, with the ability to iterate. Next, I asked Mark about what it takes to be truly agile. This mindset, as well as process of testing, learning, and iterating dynamically, as it applies specifically to content development. So what's interesting is that uh, when you talked about being data-driven and data-influenced, that so aligns with the overarching trend towards being agile. Agile is influencing everything that's being done in terms of development, even the way people work. So how do you recommend or how do you guys even operate melding the two of Taking the the insights that you've learned along the way after even creating it and using that to pivot, which may lead to yeah. versioning. Uh, yeah, I, I, it does. And I, and I think that this is yeah, probably a common, you know, common issue for, you know, for organizations that want their content to be by and large, you know, uber brand centric, right? Versus a very specific, you know, initiative or, you know, marketing tactic that they're going to take around some smaller, you know, initiative that um, that doesn't require, you know, months and months and months of, of um, development and um, analysis, right? How do you find that balance between being agile and being able to use the stronger data and then being able to be smart, you know, with the pivot. And this is where I think we're, we're getting into with the adherence to really understanding the brand. You need to bring in your partners and you need to have them at your side always. If they understand where your brand is going and they are along for the, the ride during the good days and the bad days, you know, they have enough knowledge so that they are just like any other in-house team member is, then and only then can you be really successful. Then you can be really quick with, you know, new analysis and like how you want to pivot. And you're not trying to either replicate a model that you're using for another client or another company or something of that nature, which is why I think now we're seeing the trend of so many of these large entities building brand studios within their company, right? Because it's, you know, nonstop kind of evolutionary process with the brand. Do you feel that the clients themselves, that they are not in tune with their customer to know what they may want, to know what they may want to ultimately see? The answer to that is probably, you know, company to company, you know, very unique to to each of them. I think that the ones that don't necessarily do research and can rely on, you know, an agency that really understands a deeper level of connectivity to the brand experience, that's where they can apply, you know, deeper analysis of the things that they do. You know, I think one of the biggest things that brand strategists try to do is to understand the competitive landscape. Well, what if you were working with a organization that is thinking about the competitive landscape with everything that they do? They have had experiences working with some of that competitive landscape and then, you know, infusing some of that into the decision-making on the content. If any of us have ever worked, you know, in-house, at a company, especially a very strong brand, it's tough to just keep drinking the same Kool-Aid day after day after day after day. So I want to go back to a a earlier point that you had made. And it 
really all centered around understanding the objective of the content. And depending on whether or not your client wants to have the content be brand focused, of which there may not be as many pivots, or whether the objective may serve a different one. It leaves me the question of do clients typically have a very clear understanding of what the objective of their content should be? And is that many times the crux of the challenge or what inhibits them from creating you have the content they feel that they need to hit the goals they've set? Right. Well, you know, and this 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 does go back to an earlier point. You know, I think we're we're in a world now where everybody sees themselves as a broadcaster and a creative. And look, that's that's awesome, you know. But at the same time, there's certain skill sets need to be applied to the right challenge and the right, you know, opportunity. And I think that you know a lot of folks who are making decisions at at larger companies, you know, they may not be content creators. They may they may have a great understanding of what their brand needs to do to survive. Um, and they might have the best business strategies and intentions in sharing that, you know, with the world. But, you know, this is where the creative led, you know, approach in a, you know, in an analytical world kind of meets and with the right talent that understands the infusion of both those sides, that's when great content can be produced. And, you know, do large, large teams at large corporations often have the wherewithal to know how all those pieces need to be aligned? I would probably say not. I think that now that we're in this world of, you know, create something cool, you know, post it in an hour, see how everybody's liked it, has kind of created a, you know, a pause free environment for content creation where you should pause, you should write that script, you should think about, you know, how this is going to, you know, be potentially taken by those core audiences. You should test it on somebody, you should show somebody, you know, especially for like larger you know, content pieces or larger campaigns that you're going to release, let's test it. Let's see how it's going to go. It doesn't have to take months. It could take a couple days, you know, to, to, you know, show, show it to, you know, to the right audiences and, and get a, get a feel for where it's, you know, what, how people are going to react to it. We're living in a very interesting time where everyone's a broadcaster. And I think that we need to sometimes take a step back and, and really think about, you know, what core expertise needs to be applied to ensure that, the investment that we're making and the the time that we're dedicating um, to something is going to be as impactful as it needs to be. Great insight. So what last words of advice do you have for companies to help them really sustain the strategic momentum around building the right content? I think content strategy needs to move into a, a, a much more layered approach. You think about all these different you know audiences and you think about how the content needs to be explored for all the different ways that you want people to engage strategically with your brand if we're looking at creating a content strategy that is just as dynamic and just as layered well let's think about both the time and effort and expense and the right people and the right approach to each one of those you know creative and strategic endeavors and then and only then do we really have a strategic approach and you know a way forward and and one that can be best analyzed um, because of the complexity of the layers to see what's what is resonating the most with our audience you know this kind of baseline level 1 that just really kind of you know exudes more of what the brand means um, and showcases how that can be you know part of somebody's day to day life well then let's explore more of that you know let's let's see how these these experiences not only live within the the confines of the core company content experience, but let's see how it lives within each one of the domains under which you're producing content within that sphere. And I think then you're going to start to see and be able to generate insights that are not only, you know, industry driven, but are also internal. And then, and then you're going to have more success. So taking a layered approach to build that strategic plan that ultimately drives insights to create better content. Lastly, what's the best way listeners can connect with you? Connect with me on LinkedIn or connect with me with my email address, uh, mark at batescreative.com or visit our website, batescreative.com. Thanks so much for your time today, Mark. Thank you. 
To create a compelling content strategy, you have to think about everything around your company's brand. That requires you doing your research and getting strategic insights from the data, which all leads to identifying what's relevant for your audience. This will ultimately guide the development of customized content that will be engaging for them. And along the way, you have to work closely with your creative partners and be prepared to pivot. Because as your brand is constantly evolving, so should your content. Thanks for listening to the Strategic Momentum Podcast. You can learn more about Mark and his work with Bates Creative at BatesCreative.com. That's B-A-T-E-S-C-R-E-A-T-I-V-E dot com. If you want to hear previous episodes or get show notes from this episode, visit us on our podcast page at flywheelassociates.com slash podcast. I'm Connie Steele, and you've been listening to the Strategic Momentum Podcast.